Good morning, fourth graders. This is Miss Ferguson, and it is Friday, May 15th, 2020. First of all, happy Friday. Congratulations on making it through another busy week of distance learning. We're going to be continuing to talk about character traits and specifically character traits within the context of the Hope Chest as we continue reading this great work of historical fiction. So let's review some of the things that we've talked about with character traits before and also focus on our new learning target. And our learning target today is going to be, I can determine character traits based on dialogue, action, and thoughts. Even before we get into the review and going over today's lesson and learning target, I wanted to give a couple quick glows and grows about our work that we've been submitting this week. First of all, a big glow is in our independent assigned work, so our packet practice, which as you know goes along with what we are doing in our lessons and what we're reading in the Hope Chest. I'm getting wonderful responses. Particularly, I'm impressed with the fact that when girls are being asked to tell how Violet's actions are affecting others, I'm getting really thorough and complete answers. And I love how we are implying how those actions affect others. I was also really happy to see that in many, many responses, girls are talking about the particular question was how what does Violet think about Myrtle's situation and it being like her own and the spe question specifically asked for evidence from the text and I'm really seeing that we are applying those details that rad evidence from the text so continue the great work another glow even is that the work that's been submitted is very neatly and thoroughly written and I can really tell that we are putting our effort into this and that we're truly reading and thinking about what we're reading and applying it to our daily lessons. One grow is I'm still only getting a certain number of girls submitting pictures of their packet work. I know in the past there was some confusion because not all packet work had to be submitted because we had different independent assignments. But right now, your independent daily work is your packet question. So you should be sending pictures of your daily work. I'm getting several girls in William Smith, so kudos to you, William Smith, who are sending their work every single day on time. But I'm not getting many from Spellman. I know that you're doing your work, so girls, make sure you're sending it so that I can take a look at it and be able to address it with you independently or give flows and grows as a class. Also on News ELA this week, I have noticed that the past couple of days, I had gr nine girls out of the whole fourth grade do today's assignment, nine girls out of the whole fourth grade do yesterday's assignment, and 11 girls out of the whole fourth grade do Tuesdays, 12 girls out of the whole fourth grade do Mondays. So there's a couple of wonderful glows and a couple grows that we need to work on. I want to make sure that I can see the work that you're doing and help you if you need it. And I want you to get credit for the hard work you're putting in. So let's continue with character traits. So we have done a lesson on this before during distance learning, and it's something we've talked about when we were in school as well. But let's just review. What is a character trait? Is it a feeling that a character has, a word that describes their personality? the place that the character lives, or what a character looks like. What do you think? It is a word that describes a character's personality. If you remember from the previous lesson we did last month on character traits, character trait has nothing to do with how a character looks. Those are physical traits. Think about your character traits. A trait describes a pattern of behavior. That pattern of behavior is your personality. If you forget one homework assignment, you might not be a forgetful person, but if you forget one homework assignment each week, then you might say that being forgetful is a trait that describes you. So the important thing to remember here is that a trait is a pattern of behavior. Sometimes we all have something that happens that we do once or twice here or there. 
For example, we're all grumpy at some point, but it doesn't mean that it's a character trait. It doesn't mean that we're grumpy all the time. Think about yourself. Let's take a look at some traits and which ones do you think might describe you? Why don't you pick one? Forgetful, responsible, impulsive, that means you act without thinking, imaginative, resourceful, finding solution to problems, considerate, stubborn, Sometimes we talk about supporting traits. So it's not enough to just say, oh, here's a character trait that describes this character. You have to be able to support this trait with specific actions. And those actions come from what we read. So just like we need text evidence to back up different responses, you need evidence from the text to support the character traits that you've selected. If we said that Aiden is creative, we might pull an example that he built a flying squirrel out of art supplies. So he created something, he's artistic. So the trait is he is creative. The support is, well, he built a flying squirrel out of art supplies. So that proves to me that he's creative. You don't have to write this down, but I want you to think about this. And if you want to jot it down to talk about later, that's totally fine too. Think about the trait that you chose to describe yourself. Think of a sentence or two that would support this trait. What is your proof that that trait describes you? What can you tell me or tell someone else to prove that your character trait is a fit for you? Think about specific actions that you have done. So how do we learn about characters' traits? We can learn about character traits in different ways. Direct characterization, their words, their actions, and what others say about the character. Remember in a story that a character's words, the conversations they have, that's their dialogue. So we can infer character traits based on that dialogue, based on the things that they do, their actions, and also the things that they feel and think. Sometimes authors will come right out and tell us a character's trait, and we call this direct characterization. Arthur peered at the wall in frustration. He did not always pay attention in school and never had good grades. But Arthur was patient and he liked to solve puzzles. He would find a way to climb this wall. Do you see where they gave us a specific character trait using direct characterization? They told us that Arthur is patient. We can also learn about a character's traits by paying attention to the dialogue, what the character says. I'll clean off both cars today on that snowy day that we're lucky is behind us right now. When he says, I'll clean off both cars today, what trait does that dialogue show? What trait do we see based on his words? Do you have one in your head? We could say responsible. We could say thoughtful. We could say helpful. Those are some examples of traits that we could infer based on what he's saying. Notice that there's not just one correct trait. There are different traits that we can apply to a character based on their thoughts, their words, and their actions. We can learn about the character's traits by paying attention to their dialogue. So, Using that thought, he says, I can't wait to see what creatures live in here. Hmm, if he can't wait to see something, looks like he's sitting in the lake or the ocean. 
what do you think is a good character trait? What trait does this dialogue show us? We could say scientific, thorough, enthusiastic. You could even say curious. Again, notice there's not just one correct trait. Again, make sure that we support our trait. We wanna be able to speak or write about the trait we've chosen and support it with evidence. So how could we support this one here? Well, Aiden says that he can't wait to find, the cre find a creature. This shows that he is, that's where you would put your character trait, because, and then you would connect them. Liza looked at the wall. I'll be able to climb it, she said. I can climb anything. Arthur didn't comment, but watched as Liza took a few more steps toward the wall. Piece of cake, she said. I'll be up and over in no time flat. What tree does this dialogue show? We could say she's confident. We could say boastful. And there's not just one correct trait here. There are different traits we could infer based on that dialogue. How could we write a sentence or speak a sentence to explain and support her traits? I want you to think about that. A lot of times when we're reading, we skim or sometimes people skip over dialogue. And is that something we should do? Sometimes we feel like something isn't important, so we skim or skip it altogether. Do you think that's a good idea when we're reading? Why or why not? Think about how many times we've talked about dialogue specifically and the things we can infer in a text using dialogue. We're going to be moving on on Monday to continue talking about character traits because our strategy on Monday with the Hope Chest is, again, the same strategy where we will be using character traits and determining them based on dialogue, actions, and thoughts. This is a really thorough topic with several parts, as you can tell, and it's hard to fit all of that into a short mini lesson. So we're going to continue it Monday because it's a strategy we're continuing to work with. So we'll be starting Monday talking about a character's action. Your agenda today is, now that you've finished this lesson, you need to do your independent packet practice. So you need to do your reading for today. So for Friday, May 15th, within your packet, you are reading chapter four. You have an activity where you are jotting down Violet's words, actions, and thoughts, and using those to determine a character trait. So dialogue, the things she says, actions, the things that she does, the, her thoughts, things that she might say to herself. What is she thinking about? And then use those to determine a character trait. And then you will also be writing a paragraph describing Violet in her character trait and supporting with at least two pieces of evidence from the text. And also don't forget to log on to News ELA and complete today's article. Have a great day, girls.